November 13, 1985, the Nevado del Ruiz volcano erupted in Calidasas and Tolima, Colombia. The explosion formed violent flows of mud and debris called lahars. The lahars quadrupled in size as they converged with the nearby river valley, destroying everything in their path and taking the lives of 23,000 people. The town of Armero was almost completely decimated, which is where 13-year-old Omira Sanchez lived. Her home, where she lived with her father, mother, little brother, and aunt, was destroyed. Omira was discovered by volunteer rescue workers from the Red Cross trapped in the mud and water up to her neck and clinging to life. Upon trying to free her, they soon found out that they could not just simply pull her out of the water. Rescue volunteers discovered that her legs were trapped by concrete bricks and the body of her aunt. It is reported that her aunt's arms were tightly gripped around Omira's legs and feet. Although in agonizing pain and fighting for her life, Omira remained optimistic. She would sing with volunteers and ask for sweets, but when her condition became too overwhelming, she would cry and pray. As days passed, gangrene and hypothermia took their toll on the 13-year-old's body. She began to hallucinate about missing school and even asked bystanders if they would take her. The whites of Omira's eyes darkened and her face swelled as she sadly inched closer to death. Some sources say that on the third day, rescuers were able to retrieve a pump and try to free Omira, while others say the resources were unavailable, but regardless, it was impossible to free her without amputating her legs. Because they had no access to the equipment necessary to safely perform the amputation, the doctors and rescuers all agreed that it would be more humane to just let Omira pass away. According to photojournalist Frank Fournier, quote, she can sense her life was going. And in an interview, hours before her death, a weakened Omira said her farewells. At 10.05 a.m. on November 16, 1985, Omira Sanchez passed away after suffering for three days. Her dad also perished. Her mother was away at the time of the eruption, and her brother survived with only a broken finger. Omira's image was broadcast around the world, and people of course wanted answers on how this could have happened and why more wasn't done to save Omira and the thousands of people who perished. It was found out that scientists detected volcano activity months before the eruption, but because the last eruption was over a century before, the government authorities didn't take it seriously and did not properly warn those at risk. Economic disparities, coupled with the lack of organized manpower and life-saving equipment, was also blamed. 